halfway in. It won't be long. It should be bolted back into place. So we got the motor back in its place. It took a while. We had a problem with the bracket on the axle. It kept preventing us from sliding the motor to the rear and going around the axle. So Audrey was able to get under there and move it for us. So that was a big help. So now we got all the bolts all on the top. They're all put in their, their place, not uh, tightened in, but they're just uh, in place. Now we're gonna tighten them up. Okay, so now we got the uh, bolts on the transmission to the uh, engine, all tightened down on the back. We'll finish off the motor support one, and we'll be able to remove the engine hoist. So the engine leveler worked really well, came in handy. So the engine hoist that we got, as you can see, really doesn't take a whole lot of room once you fold it all up and you're done with it. It easily fits in the corner, out of the way, and it's practical for lifting anything that's heavy. So as you can see on the side here, it goes from half a ton, ton, ton and a half, right up to two tons it can lift. So that's pretty, pretty practical. So it served you well. Yeah, I was happy to have it. So that's the bottom of the uh, transmission all bolted in. Now we're going to do the flywheel to the torque, put all the bolts in as we rotate the engine, and then we're all set. So we'll show you that. So I marked the uh, flywheel and the uh, torque converter, so if there's any balancing between them, that they're, so they're well balanced, and that they keep the balance factory balancing, I marked them, put them back in the same spot. We're just going to keep putting the bolts in now. So now we got a bolt in. We'll just snug it in. We'll loosen it off because you need to have a little bit of jiggle room to catch all the rest of the bolts, and then we'll go around and tighten them all down finally. So what I did there was I brought the torque back to the flywheel so that I'm able to catch the bolts much easier.
loosen it, you don't want to loosen it a whole lot because you don't want the bolt hitting the casing of the motor as it rotates. So here I have my ratchet on the crankshaft pulley and I'm turning it so John could put the bolts in the flywheel into the torque. So we got all the bolts in, they're all tightened down. And now we're just gonna put our little door on and we'll be ready to move on to something else. And that's that. There's only one bolt? There's only one bolt. So if you have to work on cars outside, I highly recommend getting these foam mats that clip together. They're so practical instead of rolling around on the gravel. And John likes them too. Right John? Yeah, they work good. Putting the starter in now. I have to take transmission support off. in that bolt and looks into me. Okay. Axle support or the muffler support? Axle. Axle support. So we're going to put the uh, coils back on. As you can hear, it's raining out. We're working on the top of the motor. We got most of it underneath done. The exhaust and everything's back on, all the brackets. The differential's back in its place. So we're pretty busy.
Got a lot of wires to hook back up. Gotta take our time to make sure we put them in the right place. And then we got the coolant lines all hook up. And then uh, we should be ready to start her up and see what she does. Hopefully it'll stop raining soon. Lighten them in, then we'll go on to something else. Tightening in the radiator. Yeah, putting the radiator back in now. We're getting closer. Radiator holes put back on now? Yeah, these special pliers, it goes real well. They're especially made for it. The notches fit right in. The round part fits in here. And then the notch part fits onto here. And they lock themselves in place, so you're able to slide in whichever you like. They work really well. There's some bolts always in the bad place, eh? The back of the motor, hard to get at. Sometimes you kind of wonder what the uh, ingenieur, the technicians are thinking about. Hooking up the wires, they go good because they're usually color coded. And the connector usually only fits one particular spot, so it's pretty hard to make a mistake where they go. Especially when you follow the little uh, tie downs, they plug into the engine everywhere, then you know they're in that area. There we go. When they make a click, you know they're in. That's right. Getting less and less wires to worry about. That's a good sign. Battery's going in, the air filter's in, the air hosing's all in, all the vacuum pipes back on. And I think we got everything else connected up so there's no loose wires, no extra bolts. So that's a good sign. <laughs> <laughs>
just clips in. Yeah, that just clips in. And now is she ready? Well, we're gonna put the uh, Presto one in it, and we're gonna put some power steering wheel on it, and it should be ready to turn over. It's normal that the engine smokes after the first start. Yeah, that's because we put the loose nut on a bunch of stuff and all that. There's oil that ran off things. And it's gonna burn itself off the exhaust. motor is running better. It wasn't tying properly when I first got this. I re the motor. Look how smooth the engine's running now. Before the motor had always had a shake in it because the valve on the uh, intake on the front half of the engine, which would be uh, closest to the radiator, it was off by one notch. But when I took it apart I noticed it wasn't completely timed out. So I timed it perfectly. Look how nice that engine's turning over. How late, long do you have to leave it idle? Well, I even let the smoke burn off it here and there. Let the smoke burn burning off here now. Less smoke. Doing a little bit of a test drive. We're not wearing our seat belts. That's why it's being in. There she is, ready to hit the road again. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, feel free to hit the thumbs up. And if you'd like to follow our channel, press that subscribe button. It's free, and we'll see you on the next one.